I'm not going to bother with an introduction this time because so few people seem to watch it. So, yeah, if I look at my metrics, people kind of start watching after about 30 seconds and there's a massive fall off. So, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18. Look, uh, I'm in the woods. You can tell I'm in the woods because I'm stood by wood. I've not been to these woods before. I've been getting really bored with my local woods because I think I know them. Uh, but I've been get, getting very bored with my local area. I've mentioned it in other videos. Luckily, I found on an OS map these wonderful woods. No, not, not, not this. Uh, didn't see this on the OS map. But came last night. Uh, it's, I mean, it's close by. It's only uh, oh, it's as short a drive as any of the other woods almost. Um, just didn't know it was here. Anyway. Came last night, had a quick scout, hadn't seen these last night. Uh, and uh, if you can see here, I'm doing my normal. Finding the detail because, well, that's everywhere and so much easier to compose a shot than trying to find the wood for the trees. I've got the filter system on here. I'm only using the polarizer just to take down the sheen of the green leaves and believe me, it works. It's going to be easier for me to talk you through the composition when I show you the full image. Primarily because, um, really, yeah, I've got uh, about that much space to, to point to things. Well, sometimes I do talk some crap to camera. How do I talk you through this? It's a lovely detailed composition and a study of the woodland. Not a lot else to say, is there? On to the next one. One of the things I used to do in a previous life is work on computer magazines. And uh, way back in the day, there was a game. It was an incredibly funny little game called Cannon Fodder. And Nicky passed, well, in fact, we both passed, uh, but Nicky found and spotted a wonderful little mushroom just on the floor of the path here. And uh, let me show it to you and you'll, you'll realise why I might associate it with that game. Now, to me, that looks like a cartoon helmet. Stop sniggering at the back. Even with my articulating head tripod, it's just too close to the ground to do that. So the camera is just resting on the ground with a stick underneath the lens. And you may have noticed the thing that I tend to carry with me all the time, which is a little paintbrush. I use that to just brush away little bits of debris off the top of the mushroom. It's so, so delicate that uh, the paintbrush just takes away anything that's uh, not, uh, not entirely stubborn. <laughs> So this is a 15 shot in camera focus stack. I did a bit of gardening as you may be able to see, just to provide that little bit of foreground framing. It's a nice little shot. It just needs a couple of googly eyes peering out from underneath. People often put in comments of the videos, I wish I had your eye. And um, I'll tell you what else you wish you had. One of these because she saw that mushroom, not me. Um, you know, she called me back. I was, I was way down there. I always walk ahead. Um, and uh, what? It's because I'm slow. It's, cause, it's not because she's slow. It's because I'm antisocial. Um, and uh, yeah, she called me back. And yeah, so, so look, go, go find yourself one of those because um, yeah, they're absolutely invaluable. Gives me an idea, actually. And if you want to support the channel, then yeah, there'll be prints available of any of the shots that I've uh, put up on here, and uh, you'll find some details down in the description below. But also, I mean, heck, you know, we all need money in uh, these instances, don't you? And, um, well, how about this for an idea? See, she's found something else. Uh, what about this? rent a -Nicky. She's so good at finding these little things that, uh, I mean, I don't see them. I mean, even, even if I had glasses that worked uh, very well, I probably would miss so many of these things. But, uh, but Eagle Eye Nikki here, I mean, we could make a fortune and pay the mortgages off. I'll tell you what, why don't you just click the like button instead uh, or subscribe. Uh, but yeah, seriously, if you want to, 
want to print, there's uh, some details down in the description. I said earlier that the one filter that you really should go and buy if you don't already have it is a polarizer. And it is so, so, so useful in woodland. Uh, just a perfect example in front of me here. So this is just a, a nice little scene. The effect of the polarizer really can't be over, uh, overstated here. Just look at this area here. As I rotate that around, you see how before it was almost unshootable because there's just so much highlight there. And now, having darkened it, it's so much better in actual fact, a little bit more of a turn and it improves again. But also it's these areas down here as well is these bright highlights on leaves. You can really take them down. You see how that can be kind of just tuned to... I, I can't overstate just how goddamn useful a polarizer is and uh, if you want one of these KNF filters uh, there's a link down in the description um, for yeah, various discounts and such across the uh, the site and it's not just this filter it's any of the uh, the filters oh bit of bit of thunder there um, and it's anything across the site so there are plenty of other uh, polarizing filters on the KNF site and if you'd like to support the channel uh, and you need a filter go and buy one from the link down below please. This is one of those shots that I was so sure of in the field or the wood but it doesn't quite live up to what I thought it was. There's a lot of editing required in shots like this especially if you're shooting raw. The colours that come out are just so so flat there's no contrast and it can be immediately deflating. It's also very difficult at this stage to really visualise quite what you want the finished image to look like and it can be really awkward to turn an image around. Like many of us, I find wide scenes in woodland really challenging, which is why I do tend to focus more on the detail. Um, yeah, it's a cop-out. I, you know, um, why struggle to get shots that you're traditionally bad at when you can get shots that, well, you're not traditionally bad at. And this fallen um, trunk, branch, whatever, here, let's get it more in shot, took my eye. Now, for the last shot, looking down this path, I was literally up there, uh, just, just beyond uh, the, uh, the renter Nicky. Um, that made her laugh. She didn't know I was going to say that earlier. Um, she had no idea. Um, and um, we interrupt this shot, just for me to point out here and now, that I'm not happy about that branch coming out there um, yeah it's it's not a perfect shot from my point of view uh, but I do like it now actually now I've come in here I've spotted just just the, the gorgeousness of it as well well I should I don't know I'm, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop earlier when I introduced rent to Nicky I mean I've not abandoned the idea um, but it's rather uh, rather nice it's yeah, close to this tree here. And I was trying initially to get the tree kind of in, kind of looking at it from more kind of up here. But visually, the, the, the space between the tree and the, uh, the, the dead branch was just too big. And as I kind of got closer, it, it, it really, you really kind of need to be perhaps over here for it. Maybe I'll give that a try in a bit. I'm not sure what's, uh, what's necessary there. But anyway, I thought, well, we'll just isolate it, uh, which is what we're doing um, from, from here. And again, uh, the, um, uh, the, um, the, the, the filter thingy. Uh, yeah, the, the, the polarizer, yeah. Um, yeah, keeping it on there. It's, re it's, it's making it work. Um, without it, it's not a shot. But yeah, the, the, the colors aren't there. Uh, and well, it's just not, it doesn't work without it. Look, I, can, can you see? 
Can you see? No, no, just look at the shot. This is one of those perfect days for landscape photography, very changeable, very stormy. And before we got to this location, we were out on the top of the heath, sat on a bench looking out over Sheringham, just watching this huge storm come over. I had the camera set up on that bench for quite some time, just waiting for lightning to appear, but sadly there wasn't any. We got slightly wet, but hey, it was fun. Back to detail, and around us there's just lovely, lovely mushrooms, or bracket mushrooms. You can see this one on here. It's very unusual I, well, to, to a non-mushroom aficionado uh, to have one of these kind of bracket mushrooms that's kind of completely up as a, 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 a flat top, so to speak. They normally just kind of come out more like this one. Anyway. There's a blooming huge one here. And because it's on a fallen branch and a bit of dead wood, you can turn it over and we can get really close to it and we can see the underside detail. And it is tremendous, it's absolutely beautiful. And there's this one's kind of grown in leaf mold uh, down here. It's kind of engulfed a couple of, uh, a couple of leaves. And the shot, uh, it's it, it's just so so nice and you can see very convoluted setup uh, here I, I'm sure I could have made it uh, uh, probably somewhat simpler but I like doing things awkwardly the great thing about setting up something like this uh, is now I don't have to move the camera I can just move the the subject ever so slightly underneath it and it makes quite a difference in what I'm uh, what I'm kind of achieving uh, with it. And the shot is just part of the edge of this leaf and behind it, all of the spores of the mushroom. And I, the, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, focus stack of 15, I'm gonna let the camera do the stacking. Uh, it's whizzing away at the moment. And, um, I think it's getting everything in there, but to be absolutely certain, I'm going to do another focus stack of 15 when it's done this, focusing on the mushroom rather than the leaf. Anyway, um, I hope you like the shot. This doesn't seem as sharp as I expected it to be. I'm not sure how I've muffed it up. But what I really like is the way that leaf has got those little apertures in it that allow you to see the gills of the mushroom down below. I'd like to thank everybody for their support. The channel is now nudging 2,000 subscriptions. It's taken a long while to get here, but only about six months they get from 1,000 to 2,000. That's quite heartwarming. Thank you very much. I'll leave you with a couple of images that were shot in the same woodlands a day or two afterwards. As you can see, the fog just transformed the place. I would be grateful for any other support that you can offer. Just a like, a subscribe, buy me a coffee. If you're another YouTuber and you want a collab, get in touch. Thanks also to KNF Concept for their support and supplying the polarizer and filter kit I've used in this and many other videos recently. If you're in the market for a filter or any other KNF product, there's affiliate links and a discount code down in the description.